Go ahead and stand to your feet. Welcome. Come on in. Come on. We're going to start this morning by giving thanks to Jesus who is fighting our battles this morning. Come on, everybody. Here we go. Let's sing. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory.
nothing impossible When all I see are the ashes You see the beauty oh. When all I see is the cross God, you see the empty tomb To the sinner you were great. 
his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the person who trusted him. Father, we love you. Jesus, we honor you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this room today. God, I ask for a special impartation of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. God, as we step into what you have for us today. Jesus, we love you and thank you that you are here right now. We love you. It's in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Woo! You guys can take a seat. God's here, man. You guys can take a seat. Everybody doing good? Let's go. Hey, well, my name is Talon. Uh, I'm one of the uh, pastors here at this campus. I'm actually on our discipleship team, so go discipleship. Um, if I've never got a chance to meet you before, welcome. If it's your first time, welcome. Um, also, I want to say this. Um, I'm a part of the Anderson campus here, and we have a staff of 24 people. So if you're, in the, if you're on staff with the Anderson campus, can you raise your hand? If you're on staff with the Anderson campus, you guys can look around really quick. I didn't think you were on the clock for that, but like, great. <laughs> Um, the reason I ask, say that is because we're here to help. You know, we're here to uh, help support what God is doing in your lives and also in the community. So, God, so thank you guys. You know, even Anderson staff, thank, I'm thankful for you. Also, I want to honor two people, Rhonda Terry, Jane Waters. The reason I want to honor them is because um, 
if this has been your first time over the past couple of weeks, you have run into these two women, 100%. I promise you, you have. Um, so if it's your first time, like, it's a massive deal that, you know, they're a massive part of you having a great experience your first time here. So thank you guys. So like, for real, thank you so much for what you do. Um, and I'm thankful for you guys. And also, if you're new here and you're looking at how you get connected, I get a lot of questions about this. Like, how can I get connected to such a big church? That's a question that we hear a good bit. The best way that I've found is Connect Class. Um, Connect Class is one of the ways that I got connected into our church as well. So you can text CONNECT to 30303. We actually just have 40 people go through this class, um, and a lot of them are getting connected right now as we speak. So if that's the way you want to lean in, I, I want to ask you, please lean in to that. Also, side note, whoop, this upcoming Tuesday at 7 p.m., we have a How to Hear God class. Um, this Tuesday at 7 p.m. If you're interested in that, um, there will be a table outside with balloons. And if you want to sign up, you can do that. You can text classes 30303, and that's going to be a great time as well. Um, man, God is doing something special in our church. Um, over the past couple weeks, like this in the Sermon on the Mount series, it's been so cool to see um, what God is doing. I feel like God's highlighting a thing around prayer. Today, we also, we're also going to be talking about prayer. Um, and I just also want to say this. Thank you. For the people in this room that give because generally like the Sermon on the Mount books that we gave out all these different things that we got to do this 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 series we really cannot do it without you giving um, to our church so guys thank you so much and I heard this quote um, the other uh, last night actually that we get the joy as through giving we get the joy to sow into the story of Jesus on the earth it gave me heaven's view on the matter as, as Pastor Brad says um, that just think about this. We get the joy to sow into the story of Jesus on the earth through giving. So it's not just that you're giving your money to a church. No, you're giving your, you know, when you give, um, you're helping advance kingdom. You're helping to impart the story of Jesus into people's lives around us. And it's a beautiful thing. If you want to give, there's three ways you can give. You can give through the app. You can go to the Google Play Store or the App Store for my Android people. Um, also, you can give through newspring.cc backslash give, or there's these brown boxes around the entire room that you can give as well. So I'm going to ask all of us to stand up really quick. We're about to have this minute of chat time. It's going to be really fun. Um, and today, like I said, we're going to be talking about prayer. Um, in the past couple of years, prayer has, been a prayer has been a massive thing for me. And it's been the one thing that's catapulted me into intimacy with God through conversational friendship with Jesus. Um, and I'm so excited for today and what God's going to do. So we're about to take a minute to chat, and then this beautiful uh, video about prayer is going to pop up, and then we're going to go into it. So I'm thankful for you guys. Go ahead and get to chatting up. Let's go. And see you guys. Our Father. Padre nuestro. Swarga basa pita. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Tera rajya aaye, tera ichha jaise swarg mein puri hoti hai, waise hi prithvi par puri ho. 
Danos hoy nuestra pan de cada día y perdona nuestras ofensas como nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Porque tuyo es el reino. Oh, parkram. In the glory forever. Amen. 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 Jesus said, pray then like this. Would you stand with me? Every campus. And let us with one voice. Pray as Jesus taught us every voice out loud together the Lord's Prayer. Join me. The words will be on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Lee McDermott. I'm one of the pastors here at New Spring Church. So grateful that you've decided to join us here today. I want you to think for a second. When was the first time, you know, what, what's your most vivid memory? Maybe it was your first time ever hearing those words. What's your most vivid memory of the Lord's Prayer? As I was thinking about uh, this, this message, this experience that we're going to have together, one, one particular uh, memory stuck out to me. And maybe some of you will have this similar memory. But uh, my, my earliest, most vivid memory of the Lord's Prayer was ninth grade locker room, South Aiken High School, go Thoroughbreds, uh, JV basketball team. We're all suited up, getting ready to go out and play our first game. And here comes our coach and says, all right, you beep, 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 shut up. Listen, let's pray. <laughs> our Father in heaven, we're all like, you know, and everybody just kind of joins in, knowing what's about to come next. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your blood will be does with daily bread. Uh, yours the kingdom of power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, play. Let's go play. Uh, I don't know if y'all had that same experience, you know, growing up at all. But the Lord's Prayer is, is perhaps the most famous, most well-known, most recognized, most frequently prayed prayer in all of human existence. Think about the 2,000 years worth of time that billions of people have prayed that prayer. And for many of us, it's become so routine and so lifeless just because of the repetition. I think God may want to breathe some fresh wind into his own words as he gives us some instruction for prayer today. So if you're new to New Spring, what we've been doing over these last handful of weeks is going through the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' greatest sermon that he preached, going a little bit at a time, and here we find ourselves zooming in on this instruction that Jesus gives his disciples on how to pray. So what we're gonna do today is a little bit different. We're going to zoom in and we're going to go line by line and we are going to, as a church, as a body of, of, of believers, as, as people who are gathered together here today, we are going to pray this prayer. So we're going to pray. I'm gonna talk a little bit about each one of these lines and then we're gonna put it into practice in some way. So we're going to move in and out of prayer and teaching today. Are you with me? All right. So we're gonna have a great time doing that today. What we hope is to be able to give you some tools and equipment for your everyday relationship. Jesus is not merely saying that you need to pray this exact thing this way every single time, pray this exact you know, set of words. What he's giving us is equipment to know how to walk in conversational friendship with him the way we were originally designed. Everybody lean in and listen to this. You were made for prayer. And let me explain how. In the beginning, there was man and woman in the garden with God without sin in conversational friendship. In the end of all things, when all has been renewed, when we are living in the new heaven and the new earth and all evil and sin has been swept away and everything is made new, we will be there, men 
and women with God in conversational friendship. And Jesus gives us this set of lines, these, this prayer, pray then like this. Let me teach you how to pray because it engages us. It is a key that unlocks the door to conversational friendship and intimacy with God that we can enjoy right now. It is what you were made for. So let's take a trip through it. Everybody, let's go to the scriptures now. I wanna pick up where Pastor Brad left off last week in Matthew chapter six. So let's look at chapter six, starting at verse seven. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they'll be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And then Jesus says, pray then like this. It's very important to catch this because Jesus' next set of words, this, we're, we're not supposed to treat this like some cold, some cold piece of Mozart. This, no disrespect, I love classical music. But we're supposed to treat this like jazz, like John Coltrane or like Miles Davis and take each one of these lines and then play the melody of the Our Father who art in heaven, play the melody of that and then to improvise and bring our own heart to the table and to make some genuine prayer, some music with these lines. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's dive into this and look at the first two lines and then we're gonna put it into practice. Okay, are you with me? Say amen. amen. All right, y'all. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now, when I, when I grew up, my mom used to tell me that I learned how to read and learn the alphabet through Sesame Street. So y'all remember this old bit on Sesame Street where Grover is saying, near, and then he backs up, far, and then he comes back forward. Near. You guys get it, I don't have to do it too many more times. Near, far. Our Father in heaven. This first line, Jesus helps us to understand who it is that we're talking to. Our Father, the one who is so close, who knows us intimately, who knows our needs, who is ready and willing to carry us through every aspect of this life. He is also the same God who is farther than the farthest stars, the one who stretched out the whole universe, who holds every single bit of existence in his hand and knows every single star by name. Our Father in heaven, near and far. He is above all things and he is right here. This is who we're praying to. Hallowed be your name. The word hallowed simply means holy, make holy. Think about Halloween, all holy, uh, like, like all Hallows Eve evening. I mean, you think about this word hallowed, holy. What we're saying in this verse is God, the God who is near our Father, the one who is over all things. We set your name above every other name and demand that the entire universe bow the knee and recognize that you are holy. When we begin in prayer, what Jesus instructs us to do is to put him and his grace and his name and his character and his rule sovereignly over all things before we come to the first bit of petition, the first thing that we ask for. When we do this, what we're doing is we're getting heaven's view on the matter. We're putting ourselves in the way of moving out of this season of so much church, so little change and into a place of childlike dependence and connection with the God who can seriously do the impossible. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I wonder what name is this? God is certainly known in the Bible by many names, but what we hear about Jesus is that though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven on earth and under the earth and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the name that we hallow when we say hallowed be your name. So brothers and sisters, let's put this into practice. We're going to do it by singing. 
Singing is one of these ways that unlocks something inside each and every one of us and gives us some vehicle to be able to do exactly what we were just talking about. So I wanna invite everyone at every campus to go ahead and stand and we're gonna sing. And men and women here, I just, I, I wanna give you permission to turn it loose. Your neighbor is totally comfortable with you not sounding great like a great singer. I mean, just be free. It's gonna be loud enough in here, I promise. Just turn it loose today. It is time for us to let it go just a little bit. The, men, I wanna give a special challenge to you to lead the way in singing today. Ladies, come on and bring the song of your heart. When we sing holy, 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 Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. It unlocks something in us and changes something in the world around us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let's sing together now.
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Come and teach us now, King Jesus, to pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated at every campus. There's something interesting about these next lines. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, show of hands from all the parents in the room who have kids who are teaching their kids how to be polite. If your child comes up and just says, give me X, Y, and Z. By a show of hands, parents, how many of you guys are gonna be moved to respond to your child if they talk to you like that? <laughs> Not in the McD house, let me tell you right now. We say please, we say thank you, we operate with politeness because we want our children to become functioning members of society. It is interesting that you don't have any bit of politeness in these lines. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. This is shocking. It is shocking. When Jesus, he is giving us instruction here with these, these are prayers of petition. We are asking God to do something. These, I'm just telling you guys, we've seen already the level of humility and submission that we come to the table with, with our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We see this. He is high and lifted up. He is over every other thing. His name is holy. But then these next lines, it's like he is saying, my children, the blood of the cross has come and opened a door for you to be able to come and request shocking things of me. Come and let's not waste any time with please and thank you. And the politeness that comes from how we normally interact. I feel like God is saying, you can make a few demands of heaven. We wanna do this with fear and trembling and not like act like God is a vending machine, but like, I just wanna be true to the text. It seems like God is saying, come and lay a demand on heaven and see if I will not change things because of your words. And so when we think about this, look, look at the order of it. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is this massive view, this massive invitation to request that God changes the world around us. And then it lands in this very personal, very daily Give us this day our daily bread. We see God here putting this invitation that he echoes elsewhere in the New Testament. Come and ask me, come and ask me. I wonder if it's possible that God himself is more ready to give and to respond to our prayers than we are actually to ask. He is more ready to give than we are to ask. If you read through, especially in the Gospel of John, Jesus says over and over again, ask me, ask me, and see if I won't do this for you. Ask me. If my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. I mean, this is shocking stuff, you guys. Where is our faith to believe this? I wanna come to this text and say, okay, well, you said this is how I'm supposed to talk to you, so God, there are some things happening in Eastern Europe right now that are shocking to me, and so your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There are some things that, we just had a hurricane blow through here. Shout out to all of our Myrtle Beach family right now. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, there are some things happening in my state, in my nation, in my city right now. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Everyone, I want to awaken a bit of confidence inside of our church today. Is, have we been a little too polite with our prayers. Have we been a little too polite? Jesus invites us to come and swing for the fences. When we think about give us this day our daily bread, think about the words inside of that. This is like him saying, come and ask me for what you need. I already know what you need, come and ask me. And that word daily in there, 
I mean, think about the vision of our church, everybody. We want to see everyone everywhere in an everyday relationship with God. Jesus is inviting us to come to the table every single day and say, God, I have needs today. I need you. I need you to meet my needs today, God. These are the things, the obstacles that are in my way right now, the burdens that I just feel are overwhelming. This Psalm 34, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. I sought him. I went after him. I said, give us this day our daily bread. This is physical needs. This is all, not just what you need, but what you want. All of the things that are on your heart, Jesus knows these things and is ready to hear you unpack them in front of him every single day with perseverance, with like keep, keep the heat on. There's a verse in Isaiah that says, give the Lord no rest. I wonder how many prayers would it, what was he willing to give to me, but I gave up praying them just one day too early. Y'all, I feel like these prayers for us, it's a call for New Spring Church, for everyone who is watching this. Dude, let's get the politeness out of our language with God. Jesus is the one giving us the instruction. Let's follow his lead and let's lay a demand on heaven today for the world around us and for the world right up in front of us. So let's put this into practice. I'm just gonna lead us into a time of, of praying this prayer in our own words. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. So would you join me in prayer? Now, every head bowed, every eye closed. When we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is right for us to ask the question, what is happening in heaven that is not happening on earth? And conversely, what is happening on earth right now that is wrong and broken and evil and that is not happening in heaven right now? So would you take just a moment and stretch your mind and think to the ends of the earth. Let's get outside of South Carolina. Let's get outside of America right now. What is happening in the world? What have you seen in the headlines that has struck your spirit, that has struck your soul as wrong? What is that thing? Bring it before God now. And in your own words, say, your kingdom. just a moment and bring that prayer before God. God, we lift up the situation that's happening with Ukraine and Russia to you. We have prayed and we come to you again. Holy Spirit, bring peace, bring revival. Spread the wildfire of your gospel through both of those nations and let there be a restoration of brotherhood. God, I pray for North African Islamic nations where Christians, our brothers are being persecuted who are being attacked, who are even being killed for their faith. Would you spread the church and your gospel like wildfire? What nations are coming to mind? Brothers and sisters, what nations are coming to mind? Say their, nation, say their names out loud to God and lay claim. Your kingdom. Let's bring the nations before God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's bring it, bring it, what's happening in America right now that we know needs to change? What's happening in our state that we know needs to change? What's that thing that's just bugging you, that's burdening you? It's possible that the Holy Spirit has put a holy discontent inside you that he wants to hear about right now. Let's pray. What does God want to change? And he's just waiting on us to ask him for your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, here in our nation, in our state, as it is in heaven. Lay that in front of him.
And now think about what your greatest need is right now. What's that daily bread need that you have right now? That thing that you woke up anxious about this morning. Let's just be honest with Jesus about it. And pray this, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus, we need you. Will you come and take care of this for me? What's that financial need that you have that he needs to meet? What's that material need that you have? Is there illness in your family that you need healing for? What is that thing that you need to bring before God? Just let him know, just tell him. What's that deep heart need? Tell him your deepest desire and pray, give us this day our daily bread. does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God and so King Jesus we ask that you would give us more of yourself that you would pour out your spirit on our church in our own lives in our bodies in our homes in our cities in our nation our state and around the world we declare to you God we are making a demand on heaven your kingdom your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the same way, Jesus, that you prayed in the garden, not my will, but yours be done, we surrender our own will to yours. And we invite you to come and have your way. Bring revival, bring revival, bring awakening, God. All for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Let's read on everyone. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So we've moved now from the, your kingdom come and, and your will be done. Give us this day our daily bread into this prayer for forgiveness and this lead us not into temptation. These are prayers about our spiritual lives, about spiritual protection, about spiritual warfare and deliverance. Jesus knows that we need these things, and so he gives us instruction on how to pray specifically in these areas. And so when I read, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors, the thing that immediately came to mind that I wanted to share with you was some explanation that the Apostle Paul gives in Colossians about this very thing. So would you turn in your Bibles with me to Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, and we'll see just what, uh, what God is really talking about, what Jesus is talking about when he says, pray like this, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. It's Colossians 2, verses 13 through 15. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities, put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. When I was a senior in high school, I went to uh, you know, um, this Young Life retreat, uh, like a, the, the winter situation at Windy Gap <laughs> back in the day. I don't know if any of you guys have ever done that. And I remember I had, I had become a Christian, given my life to Christ when I was a, a little boy. Um, but here in this place, I was a senior in high school. I go, and then the guy's talking about it. And he says this, this one phrase, the speaker was, was presenting the gospel. And he said one phrase that bowled me over and opened up a brand new understanding to the gospel. He said this, somebody had to pay. Somebody had to pay. And when I thought about my sin, the, thing, the guilt that I carried around, all the rest of this stuff, it finally helped me understand what Jesus did for us on the cross. He, was given, he, he basically was highlighting the idea that the wages of sin is death. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody who walked into a New Spring building today, you on your own, apart from Christ, have racked up a massive debt with God. And Jesus comes forward saying, I would like to take care of the bill. I would like to pay the bill. And so we have a choice in this matter. We can receive Christ's payment for all of our sin. We can let him pick up the check 
Or if we in pride and in shame and in our own self-deified sense of control, we say, no, 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 I, I'm responsible, I'm gonna be in control here, then what we have to wrestle with is the fact that we will spend eternity paying that price in separation from God in hell. This is the bad news of the gospel. And the good news is that Jesus comes forward saying, I want to pay, let me pay, come and receive the free gift of salvation. When we come to Christ and he gives us this instruction, forgive us our debts, we come to him knowing that he is ready and able to pay off the whole thing for us. And the beautiful thing about this is that when he pays the debt for us, he deposits into the account infinite wealth by which we can forgive other people. I don't know if you've ever struggled with forgiving someone before, but it is not easy. It's not always easy. And I'm here to tell you today that you as a human being in your own strength, you do not have what it takes to do it. When Jesus comes to pay the debt, he also puts enough wealth in your bank account that you can pay off the worst thing that anyone has ever done to you. And so when he comes and says, pray like this, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. He is saying, come and enjoy the depth of my forgiveness that will not only set you free, it will set free the people around you. This is a massive move in spiritual warfare as well. I'm just here to tell you from a pastoral perspective, the greatest amount of demonic influence in anybody's life most of the time is coming through the open door of some bitterness, some unforgiveness that they've let wide open. Because at the end of the day, what unforgiveness says is, you're not God, Jesus. You don't get to be judged. You don't know what they did to me. I'm gonna sit here in the judge's seat as God and withhold forgiveness for them forever. The refusal to forgive is blasphemy. It is essentially saying, I am God. I don't care what you did on the cross, Jesus. I get to say who's right and who's wrong. I get to say who pays. Brothers and sisters, the gift of forgiveness is an invitation into humility to say, you alone are God and you forgave me for everything I've ever done wrong. How can I hold anything against anybody else? It shuts the door to the enemy's work in our life. And I say that with complete sense of gravity knowing that some of you have been hurt so deeply that the prospect of forgiving someone else for what they did to you is like, climbing Mount Everest like today. I know it's huge, which is why it takes a miracle. Jesus' blood on the cross provides the miracle. When we pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, what we're saying is, I need your forgiveness. I thank you for your forgiveness. And it's not on my own strength, but out of your infinite wealth, I apply that to this person and I forgive them. I let it go. I let it go. That's what we're gonna do here in just a moment. But Jesus also instructs us, pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I wanna clear up this word about temptation right here. And let's not get it twisted. James is very clear. It says, God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So when we think about lead us not into temptation, what we're talking about is testing and trial. There's so much in that realm that we can avoid simply by clinging to God and staying in, right in line with what his best for our lives are. And so this is a prayer of humility. God, keep me close to you. Give me your grace and your mercy in order to be able to go about my daily life. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. We want God to deliver us from evil. And so when we pray this, we're praying protection around ourselves and around our family. When we do this every day, what we begin to find is that God comes and he does just that. He, he guides us through the day and he protects everything that belongs to him in our lives. So let's put this into practice now. Let's put this into practice. Every head bowed, every eye closed at every campus. It's time to let it go, brothers and sisters. I'd like to invite everybody at every campus to, would you put your hands out in front of you, palms up? And I want you to imagine in those hands is every last bit of guilt and shame and wrongdoing the burden of all that you carry around, all the things you hate about yourself, all of that stuff. Imagine it there in your hands and feel the weight of it. And I want you to pray 
that mind. Forgive us our debts. As we also have forgiven our debtors. This is a moment of confession and repentance. Tell God what you're sorry for. Just air out that dirty laundry with Jesus. He's ready to hear it. Imagine that he is removing that weight from you and placing the lightness of his spirit in your hands and you are again being filled to overflowing with his spirit and the knowledge that you are completely forgiven and free if you have trusted in him. And now out of that moment, I wanna invite you to ask the spirit to bring to mind anyone who has hurt or offended you. This may be painful. And I want you to hold that person or those people, those situations in mind. And I want you to simply pray this, King Jesus, I thank you for forgiving me. Out of your wealth and your power, I now forgive those and name them. Jesus and forgive them and receive God's freedom. Do that now. brothers and sisters, I want you to engage in this practice. Sometimes forgiveness needs to become a daily choice in order for it to take root. I want you to engage in this practice, what we just did, as many days in a row as it takes for you to get to the place where you can speak blessing over the life of someone who has offended you. When you're able to speak blessing over someone's life, you know that forgiveness has taken its full root and that the fruitfulness of that is on the way. This may need to be a daily choice you make. God knows that. And so when you pray this every single day, when you pray the Lord's Prayer every day, He is going to provide help for you when you need it. So let's take a moment to pray now, just a a prayer of protection. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Take a moment now to pray and ask God to protect you, your family, everything that belongs to you, everything that is in your life. Invite God's deliverance and protection. God, we thank you that you hear us. And we need your help to forgive, God. It is so difficult. But you provided an infinite sacrifice. By one sacrifice, he's made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Your blood is enough, Jesus. And so we thank you for your complete past, present, and future forgiveness of us. And we invite you, God, your help to be able to take from that wealth to forgive those who have offended us. We forgive because we have been forgiven. And we ask for your help and protection over our own bodies, over ourselves, over our homes, our families, over our church, our cities, our state, and our nation. Lead us, God, and guard us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. And here we come to the amen. The yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you'll notice in Matthew, that is not in there. (laughs) I don't know if you guys picked up on that. But... Jesus' teaching from the Sermon on the Mount for the Lord's Prayer ends with, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So where did this yours is the kingdom bit come from? So early, early, early in the church's history, the earliest church fathers, the apostles, they had this you know, kind of bit of teaching that they would give to the church early on. It was called the Didache, which is a Greek word that simply means teaching, the teaching. The earliest, right, this is like the first century. This is first, so 90, 95, you know, somewhere around in that time period. This document was written that has some instruction that said, basically, pray the Lord's Prayer every day. And at the end of it, it had written, and yours is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. And so this became a tradition in the church to add this at the end of that prayer, which is really, really wonderful. They also add, pray this prayer three times a day. So there's this ancient rhythm of praying the Lord's Prayer in the morning, coming back to it midday to pray for the lost or to pray to hear God 
coming back to it to pray gratitude in the evening. I mean, so there's this three times a day rhythm in praying. So the cool part about it is, is that, that yours is the kingdom, power, and the glory, even though it was not in Matthew, it is deeply biblical. It is in the Bible, and I want to point you to that place so you can, you can kind of see where this comes from. So everybody turn in your Bibles to 1 Chronicles 29, verse 11 through 13. This is a prayer of King David. And so I imagine that Jesus, probably when he was explaining this, may have even included this, even though it's not in the text. He would have given this instruction to the apostles for them to give as a gift to us flowing down through these centuries. So this prayer of King David, it goes like this. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and we praise your glorious name. This is the amen. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we come to the end of the Lord's Prayer, it is right and good for us to say these words and to not just say them, but to live them out in some measure of response. And so as we put that that part into practice today, I want it to become these five things that we have been doing at the end of every New Spring Gathering for the last handful of weeks. When we think about our yours is the kingdom moment, I think we have an opportunity to do it right now. So would you join me and let's put this into practice. Everyone at every campus, would you stand with me And if you're a part of a ministry team, would you come forward? This is your moment where we would love for you to come and get into place so that we can um, respond, so we can respond to God. So everyone, you know, at the the end of every service, we we give these opportunities to be able to receive salvation, to come and pray, to write down a prayer, or to come and kneel at the altar, to come and take communion, to uh, worship, to be able to sing, and to be able to give. These are our tangible, concrete ways that we can end the Lord's Prayer by saying, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I want to speak to each one of these things. I want you to think about them before we have a time where we're going to move in response. The first is simply this. We offer this every single week. If you want to give your life to Christ, why wait? This is the moment. I want to speak to anyone in here who's been kicking the tires on Christianity. You, you know, maybe you, you've, you've just been sort of like watching it from a distance, but somehow you're here today. I want you to know you're not here by accident at all. And Jesus stands before you today to say, I would like to pay your bill. I just want to say, are you tired of holding on to years of guilt and shame Aren't you tired of white knuckling your life trying to get to God by good works or try to be a good person? Jesus would like to take all of that from you today. And in exchange, he would like to give you all of his peace, all of his forgiveness, all of his freedom. He simply invites you to come and to pray and say, Jesus, I acknowledge you as Lord. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the Will you please pay my bill? Will you pay the debt for me? So I wanna invite you in just a moment when I say amen, come forward. Nail your name to the cross and make public this decision to put Jesus as the centerpiece of your life. The next thing we can do is pray. So many of you have come all over these last weeks and you've written down prayer requests, put your name on it, and our staff has been praying. We have seen miraculous answers to those prayers. I just want, I'm here to tell you, There is something powerful when we join together in prayer. And so I wanna invite you here in just a moment, put your yours is the kingdom, power, glory forever into practice by taking one of these cards, write a prayer down, come and bring it to the altar. Get on your knees and say, God, I'm not letting go of you until you move something. Because we've got some, there's some things happening in the room here at every campus that we need God to move on today. Why wait? We pray here in just a moment. I want you to bring that request down. I want you to let somebody lay their hands on you, pray for you. Are you sick? Do you need healing? One of the things, if if the doctors have told you they can't figure out what's going on, maybe Jesus wants to figure it out. So come down, let somebody lay their hands on you and pray for you. Write that thing down, let us pray for you. This is a part of what it means to be the church. 
we are going to pray and watch God move in these days. Would you join? Would you do that? Would you put your, yours as the kingdom? Let that be a part of your response. Communion is also something we've been offering every single week. And this was the practice of the early church to every single week take communion together. All of the things in, about communion are written in to the Lord's prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus is what we take in when we pray that prayer. Forgive us our sins. Like the, his blood poured out is there for the forgiveness of sins. Every single week, don't let, it, don't, don't let it get stale at all for you because God has a brand new thing he wants to communicate to you through taking of communion every single week. It is his gift to you to remember and to be indwelt with his spirit yet again. For some of us, we need to sing, and we need to sing loud, and we need to let this be a day where we turn something over and we're like, I'm not just gonna sit in church anymore with my arms crossed. Your voice to God matters and he would like to hear your song today. We also bring our yours as the kingdom when we give. If times have been tough for you and you have found that maybe making ends meet is a little bit difficult, I'm just here to tell you there's a promise in the Bible that says, if you bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, he will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing on you that you will not have room enough for it. He said that, not me, it's in the Bible. Let's take him at his word today, church. Right now, the world needs a whole bunch of generous Christians to display the kingdom of God so that hope would begin to spread instead of fear. Why not us, why not now? So would you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer again? And then we will respond. However God is leading to you to respond, I want you to do it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's respond now. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I wanted to just come to you guys that are with us online and say, Everybody on all of our campuses, they're responding right now in all the intentional ways that the Lord has prompted. And you just heard Pastor Lee speak to those. But we didn't want you guys to feel left out because I believe that God is with you right there in your living room or driving in your car or even listening to this on the podcast after the fact. And you can respond as well. And I want to give you a, a way to do that. So if you've got your phone, one of the things we've tried to do is make this super easy. And just take your phone out. And if you will text the phrase church online to that new spring number, it's 30303, church online to 30303. You'll get a link. And on that link, it's going to give you options to respond. We would love to pray for you. So what weight are you carrying today? What burden do you have? Uh, we have seen God do some incredible things as literally thousands of prayers have been prayed through this Sermon on the Mount series. And we've been able to see people walk in healing, people see breakthrough in their life. I mean, guys, I don't want to try to put a sales pitch in front of you. I'm just saying God's letting us take him up on his word. And so would you today in faith put your prayer request before the Lord? Maybe today you felt very clearly when Lee was talking about that, that truth that somebody's got to pay, that you are carrying your sin, guilt, debt, shame. And today's the day that you want to give that to Jesus. Well, you can respond in faith right now, and you can do that right there on that menu once you text church online to 30303. We would love for you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. He wants to cause new life to spring up inside of you, and he wants to remove that old life, and he wants to like lead it so, so eloquently. Take your debt, pay for it, and then extend to you the beauty of his kingdom, wealth, and riches. One of the ways that you might recognize that you are not yet saved is if you have never been able to forgive. Because I think that truth is so practical that once we recognize how much God has forgiven us, it's not easy, but you feel it necessitated in our own hearts to extend forgiveness to others. So if you've got this real grip of unforgiveness in your life, maybe one of the questions you've got to ask is, am I really a son or a daughter of God? And maybe today is your day to respond 
in Jesus' name to that truth, okay? Now, one, one other thing I wanted to just point in front out, point uh, out to you guys is we've got this great resource. It's online. You can search right there on the website, newspring.cc, and we've got an entire 21-day devotional about teaching us to pray. It is fantastic. I've walked with this with a men's group. I've done this with my family at home. If you are really going, gosh, I heard you last week, Brad, talk about developing in the dark. I heard Lee this week talk about this Lord's Prayer. I want to really enact this. This Teach Us to Pray journal. You can find it online or if you want to come to one of our campuses next week, we'll get you a hard copy is an incredible resource just for you. Now, at this time, I'm going to invite my friend, Pastor Lee McDermott, over. Brother Lee, great job, man. Hey, Love you. So our friends are watching online, and I know, man, this resonated with them. Any encouragement you've got for our online family? Yeah, the first, the first thing I, I just want to encourage you is that the Lord's Prayer doesn't begin with my Father in heaven. It begins with our Father. Awesome. And so we just love you as a family. If there's any way that we can serve you in any way, shape, or form, that's exactly what we want to do. We want you to come and be a part of gatherings if if you're able in any way, shape, or form. And like if you're staying at home right now because of the hurricane this past weekend, we want to bless you and say, hey, we are praying for you. And we're just believing that God is going to take care of you through this difficult time. And uh, we want to partner with you in however we can. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, listen, before we conclude our gathering online, we do. We want to actually pray a blessing over you right where you are. And uh, specifically, let's have in mind all of our coastal family and our Florida family that has walked through this tough week and just want to believe, like you just said, that this is a gospel opportunity. One, for us to reach out and love on folks. But two, once we've had our needs met, maybe a chance for us to meet the needs of neighbors that are in, in this space of need and give us a chance to share the good news of Jesus. So let me pray a blessing yes. over us and we'll conclude. Father God, we bless in your power and authority all of our family everywhere that is leaning in online today. We ask God that you bless them with a fresh reminder of yeah. just how forgiven they are in Jesus Christ, that they might be able to let that forgiveness transcend their lives and extend it to those around them because forgiveness is an apologetic. So church family, we bless you with that apologetic this week to go shine brightly in our communities, in our homes, and in our state as we extend the forgiveness that we have received to those that need to be forgiven. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you, church. We'll see you next week.